may not have realized this, but you're the answer. You. Yeah, really. What a shock. Me? Yeah, you. You are God's answer. God usually allows things into your life and circumstances to come at you because you were the answer. It's not about, let me go take you to the pastor or let me pray for you. No, you pray. Right now. Yeah, really. If someone comes up and says, hey, you know, I got a prayer request. Don't take it. Pray it. Don't wait. Do it. That's simple. When I was in different denominations and well denominations forget the denominations when I was in church at different places people would say well, you know I have a prayer request I'd say okay what is it let's pray I would grab the person right there at the time with their hands and pray with them you see it's not about someone else because God chose you God sent you you are the one that knows the information you are the one that's there at the time you are the person God chose to be where you are today. So you are the answer to whatever the circumstance or situation is because you're the light of the world. You're not there to expose things. You're there to solve things. You have the solution. Now, other people around you don't because, you see, Jesus said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask God who abradeth not, but give it to all men liberally. He didn't say go ask your pastor. You see, he said, let him ask of God who gives to everyone. So you see, you have the answer. You have the means to get the answer. You are the answer. Jesus chose you for that reason. He made you his representative. He said, you are going to be my representative here on earth. I'm going to give you my spirit. He's going to cause you to remember my words. He's going to put into your mouth my sayings and my teachings, not your own, not your thoughts, not your ways, not your ideas. My thoughts, my ways, my teachings. You have the answer. The choice is whether you choose to be the answer or the problem. Because, no offense, if you're passing it off to someone else, you're the problem because God shows you right where you are. You know, I always see these prayer chains and I wonder, well, when the person asked you or gave you the request, what did you do? Write it down or did you pray? Because you see, a prayer chain never goes any farther than me. I stop them immediately. It's like, why do I need to ask more people to pray? I'm the answer. I ask God. It's done. Whatever God decides, it's over. Don't need to chain it. Don't need to keep going. Lord, do it. Done. Over with. I don't know, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the scripture says that you have been chosen to be the person that God wants you to be, where you are, the way you are, as you are. Because in your failings and your weakness, then He is made strong. When you think you can't do it, that's when He does do it. You see, it's not about your ability, because as soon as you think you're the one that's sent, you're not. But when you don't think you are, you are. <laughs> kind of works that way, doesn't it? It's amazing. God's kind of tricky. So, be aware of where you are. You know, kind of look around. Like, oh, the building's on fire. I think I need to get out of here. That's a good thing. It's kind of like sin, too. You know, if you're in some place where you, you know you're tempted, don't go there. But don't try to be an answer where you're not sent. But go where God leads you. Because every day, you are called and chosen and specifically given a portion of faith, a measure of faith. You've been encouraged in the word. You've been strengthened for the day. You've been prepared with all the circumstances set up just so you could find out where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, and how you're supposed to do it from the Lord himself if you are seeking him daily as you're supposed to. Then you have the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You have the answer. It's not Jesus is the answer for the world today. You have the answers for the world today because Jesus is in you. Jesus wants you to answer with him the questions that are posed to you. Don't go say, well, I'll go ask the pastor. No, ask God. Right there, then and there. Just say, 
You know, I don't know the answer, but you know, I think let's pray, and that could be the answer. You see, just the very fact that you don't know the answer might be the answer that person's looking for. Funny how God works that way. You know, there are lots of examples of this in the scriptures that God used people where they were at, the way they were at, even though they didn't think that it was such a good idea. You know, kind of like the guy that helped Paul, you know, he said, I don't know if this is a good idea, Lord. I heard he kills people, you know, but he helped Paul anyways because God said to. Or, you know, kind of like when the fishermen were told to go back out and cast their nets again, you know, he said, I don't think it's a good idea, but since you're asking, I guess we'll try it, you know. Or like, you know, they got to pay a tax, you know, and Jesus says, you know, go out and catch a fish. And he says, yeah. To pay the taxes? I don't think we can catch enough fish, you know, and he pulls, you know, gold coin out of, or whatever, silver coin out of the fish, you know, it's kind of like, ooh, okay, <laughs> wow, that's kind of unique. So you see, it's not about what you think, it's more about what he is. So what he is, is the answer, but what he's done is he's given you his spirit to be salt, light, the answer, the truth the way, the life. Because as you are sharing Jesus and living Jesus in you, then he begins to manifest himself through you to people. So wherever you go, whatever you do, there you are, so to speak, like Buckaroo Banzai. But not only there you are, but there Jesus is. And you see, wherever Jesus is, is the answer. So all you need to do, really, is to trust him. You really do. Just open your mouth, start talking about Jesus, and you'll find the words will flow out, and they'll go right to the person, stumbling, bumbling, or any way you want to do it, but guess what? They will accomplish God's purpose, because you have the answer for that person today, that circumstance that you're in, that unique predicament that God has placed you in, because you are the one chosen for it, to be the savior of it, in a way. Jesus in you is the Savior, but the point is is that you have the answer because you're the one that has the peace, love, and joy, the light, the salt, the word. Because you can encourage, you can pray, you can ask God, you know where to get the answers when you don't know. You are the answer, whether you know it or not. There shall be no night there. The Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the lamp and the lamb is the light thereof. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. You were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. The path of the just is as the shining light, which shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Did you know that you could bring darkness into a situation? You know that some people actually are like that? They, it's like they got a cloud over them wherever they go, you know, they kind of rain on people's parade, or they kind of bring darkness in, you know, they, or they bring the world in. But, you know, you're not meant to be the world. And you're not meant to rain on someone's parade. And you're not meant to cause shadows and you know, divisions and strife. But you're meant to be light. You're meant to be the salt. You're meant to be that hope. You're meant to be Jesus sharing salvation as well as encouragement in this world that we live in as it goes darker and darker. But you can always tell where a Christian's been because it's getting lighter and lighter. You see, you can tell what God is doing by the lightness or the way in which God does it because it's obvious that it's not the world's ways. So whenever you see the world doing one thing, it's probably a good idea you should be doing the other. 
because, no offense, but Christians don't get in the world to save it. Christians are out of the world that have come back into the world to bring them out of the world that they might be saved because we live in a kingdom of light, not a world full of darkness that's getting darker by the minute. Remember that. You are the answer because you are children of the light and not of the night. You are children of the day and you are not of the darkness. You are, <laughs> as much as it may surprise you, the light of the world today.